All right, now we'll move on to muscle coordination. So when we're moving through the world or during our sport activity, um, we always like to think of one muscle moving a joint, say biceps brachii, flexes our elbow joint, but there's a lot more uh, activity from secondary muscles in addition to the main primary mover muscles that, that help with movement itself. So muscles causing the movement must have a stable base, right? So if you're gonna flex at the elbow joint, you need to stabilize that proximal part of that movement, the humerus, and then thus the scapula. Um, bones not engaged in the movement must be stabilized, such as the, the scapula when we're doing elbow flexion. Um, and then muscles often cause movement in more than one plane, and so these movements need to be neutralized. So let's look at some definitions. So we have agonist. Agonist is the muscle directly responsible for producing the motion. So that's typically the primary prime mover that we're talking about. And then you also have secondary movers. So uh, say for elbow flexion, we always talk about the biceps brachii, but we tend to ignore the brachialis, which is an agonist and is responsible for elbow flexion. Synergist is another term, and this you can view as kind of cooperative muscle function. So for this example, you see the scapula and the humerus, and you have the teres major, which is an abductor of the glenohumeral joint. But you can see if the muscle shortens at both ends, it's also going to upwardly rotate the scapula. So if you don't want that motion to occur when you're abducting your glenohumeral joint, then you engage the rhomboids, which is going to create downward rotation to kind of counter that upward rotation, allowing the teres major to primarily focus on its abductor role at the glenohumeral joint. Neutralizer is another term. It prevents undesired motion, similar to what we talked about with teres major and the rhomboids. Um, so in this example, if you want to adduct the scapula or pull the scapula closer to the spine, the trapezius adducts the scapula, but also rotates it upward. The rhomboids adduct the scapula and rotate it downwards. So those will kind of neutralize um, the rotational motion and together they will just adduct the scapula. We also have the antagonist. So typically we call, call talk about the agonist and then the opposite is the antagonist, which are the, have the opposite effect on the joint of the, the prime movers or the agonist. Typically you do not want the antagonist to be activated during motion, otherwise you get co-contraction and no motion. Um, so you want them to relax to permit the motion um, and then after the motion is completed, typically they turn on in an eccentric contraction to act as the braking component of the motion. And then we're, we'll talk a little bit more about co-contraction, which is when your agonist and your antagonist. So in this image on the right, the biceps brachii, which are elbow flexors, um, are contracting. And then also your triceps brachii, which are elbow extenders, are also contracting. And that should result in basically no motion at the elbow joint or an isometric contraction. Um, so typically this occurs when you're learning a new movement, when you're a little, quote, herky-jerky or you're fearful. And then as you get better at the motion, um, you learn to use your agonist and antagonist in a better sequencing. Um, to have a better fluid motion.